All right. So here is, so I'm, now I'm in the chapter 15 class notes. Um, so do go ahead and open up that folder if you haven't all, already. As a reminder, you can always go to file new window and you can have as many VS Code windows open as you want. Like I've got four of these right now. Um, so I can look at my chapter 15 class notes. I can look at Sudoku. I can look at the string length map. Um, they can all be open in separate windows and I can flip between them. Um, but let's look at stack demo. So we're just going to together write some code that exercises these, these simple methods. So um, we're gonna model like a really simple way of um, an undo stack. So we're gonna create a stack of commands. So stack is a concrete class. It is also a generic like everything else. So we're gonna have a stack of strings. If we were truly implementing something like Google Docs, we would have a stack of like commands and command would be its own class and there'd be a bunch of stuff associated with that. For now, we're just gonna have strings. So we're gonna make a new stack. A reminder that when we declare a variable with its type, we have to specify the type of the generic here, like that it's a stack of strings. When we create a new object, we can just say new stack and have the angle brackets, but the type can be inferred based on the variable. So that saves us a little bit of typing. If you always put the type in the angle brackets, that's fine. Doesn't, doesn't hurt at all. So, all right, let's push a bunch of commands. So push a bunch of commands onto the undo stack. So the method we use for this is push. And takes one parameter, which is the, the value to push. We're gonna pretend we're typing and we type insert and then what we say, hello. There we go. I'm going to copy and paste this and we're going to put a bunch of stuff on our stack. So commands.push, let's insert a comma. You, yeah. Sure. If you had a stack of array lists, then each element in your stack would itself be a, a complete array list. So if you were to push an array list, you have a new array list on top of your stack. Yeah, and until you pop more stuff off and get at other ones. Yep. Yeah, and I guess that brings up a good point, which is we only use a stack when we only need access to the top of it, right? If we need random access to all the other elements, we wouldn't use a stack. We'd use like a list. Um, so a stack is really intended for when we only need access to the top of that, of that collection. Um, let's see. So let's do a comma. You might notice like in Google Docs when you type, when you undo things, like it undoes it in chunks based on when you've paused, right? So if I type hello all as one word, it'd be like one undo operation. But if then I pause, it would be slower. Let's put in world here too. And then maybe I put in a question mark because I'm not really sure. But then I delete the question mark because I decide I'm going to be more confident. I'm going to put in an exclamation point. There you go. There's my typing in my Google Doc. Um, much like all the other collections we've been studying, we can just print the whole thing. So I'm gonna say print the stack. While we visualize the stack as a vertical organization, when we print it, it prints horizontally because like we're in the terminal. So the top of the stack is on the far right. Okay, so like you have to transform it a little bit in your head, like the right, swing the right up to the top um, to visualize the stack as an actual stack. So system.out.println, Let's print our commands and then go ahead and run that. And you'll see 
the top of the stack is the last thing printed and it's the last thing I pushed. So insert exclamation point is at the top of the stack here. All right, let's, um, let's simulate the user pressing the um, undo button four times. Simulate the user pressing the undo button four times. Four into i equals zero. i is less than four, i plus plus, all that goodness. And then we'll call pop. So commands.pop. Pop returns the element at the top of the stack. We'll assign it to a variable and then we'll uh, print it out. So we're, we're not really undoing anything here, but I'll just print undo and then the command that we're undoing. So once you type this, I want you to predict what four commands are gonna be undone and in what order will they be undone and then run your code to verify your prediction. It is reasonable to ask the question, why would I use a stack which seems to have limited functionality over like an array list or a linked list, which can do so much more. And sometimes there are performance reasons to it. Um, we can just implement a stack um, such that push and pop are extremely fast and we'll do that in the next chapter. Um, so sometimes there's a performance reason, um, but we can get similar performance out of other data structures, um, honestly, like an array list. Um, but sometimes by writing code with a collection that is limited in more way, we communicate intention. So if we're working on like a software project and we intend it to behave like a stack and we intend for it only the top element to be accessed, by using a stack data structure, we communicate to other software engineers, hey, this is how this thing is designed. If you find yourself wanting to get the seventh element in the stack, you're probably doing something wrong because that's not how this is intended to be used. Um, so good thing, that, I think that's important to keep in mind. Like sometimes we can communicate intent with our choice of data structures. Any questions on stacks?